Good afternoon, everyone. This is T3 Live Editor-in-Chief John Darcy here to bring you the daily recap. And once again, we had another wild ride today in the S&P. It looked like today was going to be the day that we staged a really impressive bounce, but uh, as the, the late morning and early afternoon rolled on, we got some weakness. Uh, we traded well off highs. We were able to close with a little bit of a flurry uh, to get back, uh, pair some of the losses from early afternoon, but still uh, not exactly the convincing type of bounce that we've gotten used to here in 2013. Uh, perhaps a sign that we could get a little bit deeper of a correction, but uh, we were able to come off of our lows of the day as well. So a little bit of indecision right now in the market. And the name of the game right now is divergences, divergences, divergences. We're seeing divergences between sectors. We're seeing divergences within sectors. Uh, and, and, you know, we're not complaining about that. It's a stock picker's market, and all in all, that's not a bad thing. Uh, and we've been able to highlight some really nice opportunities in off the charts, in our price point sheet, and uh, in the morning call. So you take a look at the chart of the spiders, you can get a visual of it. Uh, as you can see, we had a, a wide range today in the spies. Went down below the 21-day uh, EMA, also bounced above the 8-day, uh, but we closed sort of with a doji-type candlestick, a little bit of a body here on today's candlestick after uh, what turned out to be a down open. Futures were, were slightly higher early in the morning, but weakened as we got into the, uh, uh, towards the open. But like I said, overall, just sort of indecisive action. You sort of got the same thing yesterday. Uh, which could have been a sign that maybe downside momentum was slowing. Uh, but today, the volatility, uh, like I said, not exactly the most convincing bounce that we've ever seen, but uh, just being a stock picker right now, I think, is the, the best approach. And this morning in the morning call, morning note, our focus was on social media stocks. We've seen sector rotation. Uh, we've seen rotation within sectors. And uh, the, the sector that we talked about this morning most heavily was the social media stocks and also the solars. But I'll start with the social media stocks. Uh, those have been a little bit under the radar, out of favor recently as we've seen some uh, big cap, high beta names like Apple, uh, Amazon's making the big runs, Google. Uh, but Facebook and Twitter started to look a little bit more constructive. Uh, so we named the, the morning note this morning Social Butterfly. Uh, and what we got today was some really impressive moves in the social media space. Uh, first, we'll take a look at the chart of Facebook. Facebook, really impressive move. You know, Facebook is one that we had listed previously as a potential short setup with a left shoulder, head, and right shoulder. But more recently, in recent days, we had talked about how this was actually becoming a bullish setup uh, as it broke out of a descending channel that had formed. Uh, really not a very defined head and shoulders pattern in the first place. And even then, when everybody's attention is on a pattern like that, it can often trigger some type of reversal. And that's what we saw. We had a break above this descending channel and then sort of a bull flag after this uh, red dog reversal that we saw on Facebook, uh, the lines drawn here previously. And then today, you could use that pivot high, which was 47.54 is your trigger, if not uh, playing from the bottom end of the flag. And we got a really nice igniting move in Facebook. There was some uh, talk that it could be added to the S&P 500, which I think helped trigger an, an even bigger move. But uh, impressive action there from Facebook. Twitter as well is not one that we've really talked about or been focused on since its IPO. On IPO day, obviously, it got juiced up uh, prior to, to opening for trading. And it hadn't really provided many opportunities since then. But this was the first time that it sort of the volatility had quieted a little bit. It formed a little bit of a constructive pattern. And then uh, we talked about in the morning note, and Scott talked about in the morning call, this price point here, this pattern that's already drawn. And we got a really explosive, about 6% move higher in Twitter. So uh, constructive action there. Uh, and then the solars as well was another theme that we talked about. Uh, that was the in the trenches this morning in the morning call. And FSLR was one of the names that we talked about, and, and really constructive action there as well. Uh, while the market was, was volatile and the S&Ps traded in a wide range and showed uh, not a lot of commitment to either direction, you saw FSLR uh, post some nice gains. did close off its highs a little bit, but uh, just a sector to keep an eye on along with the social media stocks right now. And then the banks. The banks are a group that had been sort of off the radar over the last few months, uh, but in recent weeks, with, within the past month or so, uh, they've become much more in favor. They had really strong runs in November and had a little bit of a dip with the market over the past few days, but I talked about in the morning call on Tuesday about how this is a sector that I think can have room to continue higher. While some other sectors are a little bit stretched, uh, the banks look healthy and look like they could continue to bounce. But also within the banks, something I've talked about is there's divergences within that sector. Not all the banks are created equal right now. Uh, Bank of America has been one of the stronger ones. Take a look at the chart. Really strong move in November, but then a pullback, like I said, with the market started to look not broken, but not as compelling as it had been previously in November. But today, a really nice reversal uh, to close in positive territory while the market uh, still finished negative. So some relative strength there from Bank of America. 
a uh, really nice action intraday. Similar with Goldman. Goldman's the one that I really like the best right now within the group, uh, whereas Bank of America's Citigroup were the most compelling ones uh, at the beginning of October when we highlighted those setups and off the charts. Goldman Sachs is the one that's holding up best right now. And it also had a reversal, closed off its highs, which a lot of tails recently, which doesn't inspire a whole lot of confidence, but did finish positive, showed relative strength to the market. So uh, that's what we like to see there. And then talk about those divergences. Uh, Citigroup opened sharply lower this morning, uh, but was able to rally. It is constructive to see strong intraday price action demand on that big dip, but Citigroup did finish negative. Uh, and, and something to keep an eye on is how weak it's been over the past uh, four or five sessions. So something that could be falling out of favor a little bit is something like Goldman Sachs becomes a little bit more compelling. Uh, and also just a few individual names from off the charts in our price point sheet. Uh, LVS. Yesterday, um, there was big call buying in the January 72 and a half calls. About a million dollars worth of calls got bought, uh, something that I noticed on Twitter and, and people calling out unusual options activity. And then we also love the, the setup there. We can take a look at the chart of LVS. You know, it, it has sort of been coiling, been really tight over the past few months, not really uh, you know, any compelling moves or any compelling momentum. But as we talked about, you get hints uh, in addition to just doing technical analysis, things like unusual options activity. Uh, can give you some hints that maybe there's some money flowing into certain areas, and, and that's what we saw today. Uh, really strong momentum move from Las Vegas Sands to help it break out uh, to new highs there. Another one, this one's from the price point sheet. Uh, HIMX HIMAX was one that was listed this morning on the price point sheet with a, a bull flag that had formed over the past few sessions. Big igniting move uh, back on November 27th. Three day bull flag as it uh, didn't give back more than half of that igniting move. Uh, held the eight-day moving average and then ignited further today uh, after getting to the top end of that range yesterday. So a uh, good job spotting that by our team and, and listing it on price point sheet and really nice percentage move there. A couple other things that weren't as much on our radar heading into today, but uh, in the virtual trading floor, our subscribers, our contributors do a good job of uh, getting on news quickly. And CF is a name that fundamentally I love this name. It's third points Dan Loeb is one that's always been bullish on CF saying that it trades uh, at a discount to some of its other uh, competitors in the phosphate uh, nitrogen fertilizer sector. Uh, but what CF announced was that they're going to explore a different uh, structure for their company that will uh, potentially have tax savings for them. Um, a WLP is because they use natural gas to produce their uh, nitrogen phosphate fertilizer, they're eligible for this uh, type of corporate structure that could save them money. And it led to a 10% move higher. You can go back to the, the chart of CF led to a huge explosive move, held in really well all day. Sometimes when you see these explosive type moves, uh, especially in CF, you, if you go back and look at the history of the chart, you see it sometimes uh, fade after big igniting moves, but really constructive to see it hold higher all day today. And uh, one that, like I said, the fertilizer group, I'm bullish on that sector, had somewhat of a tough time, uh, you know, some choppy action in 2013, but another sector that I think could continue higher through the end of the year uh, and into 2000, uh, the first quarter of 2013. And another name that we listed on off the charts uh, recently as a new idea is Baidu. Baidu didn't break out today or anything like that, but what you did see was relative strength. On days like this, uh, spotting relative uh, strength is important so that when we do get that more committed bounce in the S&P, uh, you're looking to those names that showed relative strength prior to the impressive bounce. And that's what you're seeing with Baidu right now. Held the eight-day moving average, dipped below it a little bit earlier in the day, uh, but came back, finished with gains and looks like it could want to break out. The Chinese internet names in general coming back into vogue a little bit and looking more constructive. Baidu, I think, uh, should see a breakout above yesterday's high uh, any day now. And then another important th uh, thing to note was a little bit of a bounce in gold. I say important, but uh, more of just an observation more than anything else. I don't really see a compelling setup in gold. I guess you could say there is a downtrend here in place that if you wanted to just, uh, you know, on a pure technical basis get involved with gold on a break of this downtrend, yeah, I could see doing that with a tight stop. Uh, and today it did close off its highs a little bit, so it didn't get a, a real clean break out of that descending channel, but uh, sorting, sort of getting to that point. And there wasn't a huge catalyst for today's move. There was some weakness in the dollar that as soon as the dollar started selling off, money started rotating into gold, and that uh, big rally started. But macro downtrend, downtrend on all time frames right now, unless you want to zoom way out to a monthly type time frame. But uh, like I said, if you really want to look at it technically, you could trade it out of this downtrend. But gold is not a stock. It's not an ETF. 
or it is an ETF, but it's a commodity ETF, and the underlying asset, gold, does not trade like a stock. So uh, a lot of volatility, a lot of gap risk, so something definitely to be wary of when you're trading gold. Don't expect it to act like a stock because it's not a stock and, and it's, that's not the way it's going to trade. But anyways, uh, that's been your daily recap for today. Some more really great stuff in the community and the VTF, off the charts, price point sheet. Uh, if you're watching this and you're a free subscriber, I hope you continue to get value out of the morning call, daily recap and everything that we do. But I also encourage you uh, that we have some lower price point entry points into things like off the charts and price point sheet uh, if you don't want to jump into the virtual trading floor. So I encourage you to at least take a try with those and see if they add value to your trading. Anyways, this has been John Darcy again for the Daily Recap. We'll see you back here tomorrow morning.